Thanks for joining this webinar. I'm Uzair and welcome to tonight's webinar, Winter Weddings with Peter Pryor. Aren't you glad you're indoors right now instead of being outside in the freezing cold? Well, some of us do have to work and shoot weddings in the freezing cold. I'm joined this evening by a very special photographer and a dear friend. Peter has been in the forefront of wedding photography for the past few years. His work has and it is fantastic and I'm sure you too will love Peter's work. So let's get started and give Peter a very warm welcome. Hello Peter, how are you? Hi, good evening everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us Peter. Um, we're so very glad you can make this seminar webinar uh, in spite of being not very well here. So if Peter doesn't sound very well, in your speakers, guys and girls, um, please bear with him. Yeah, it's a bit croaky, I'm afraid. No, you'll be fine. Um, Peter, can I just ask you to come a little bit closer to your microphone, if possible, or turn up your input of your microphone a little bit louder? Is that better? Yes, that's much better. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, before we start, a couple of quick housekeeping. There isn't any much. Um, we've got some. If you have a question, please raise your hand in on the control panel and type in your question. And myself and Peter will try and answer as many questions as we possibly can during the presentation. Um, if we can't answer your questions, then we will answer them uh, at the end of the session uh, where we, we will have a, a quick uh, question and answer uh, at the end of the webinar. So let's get started. So a very quick introduction about Peter, what he is and what uh, work has he been doing for the last few years. Peter, when did you start with wedding photography and what were you before you st became a photographer? Um, I shot my first wedding about 14 years ago. Um, at the time when I was a postman and like many people it's a colleague or a friend's wedding and um, it just came on from there quite out the blue originally. So why weddings? Was it just by pure fluke or accident that somebody asked you to shoot a wedding? Yeah, what, what happened, um, a guy who had a medium format camera offered to do a colleague's wedding and he was a bit yeah. nervous, so he asked me just to go along and help with a 35mm camera. And the other guy backed out the week before the wedding, so they were left high and dry. And I was yeah. almost, I was persuaded to do it, should we say. Ah, okay. So you've been yeah. a wedding photographer for almost 14 years now, and you're still yeah. enjoying as much as you did in your first year? I love the weddings. The business side is um, getting tougher and tougher, but that's life. You have to get on with it. But the actual weddings are still hi enjoy it and you keep improving every year or by every wedding you shoot so how many weddings do you roughly shoot in a year um, most years in the region of 50 this year we've done we will have done 40 by Christmas which is slightly wow. down wow so that is a huge part of your business I guess wedding photography yeah about 90% these days. It used to be nearly 100, but we do other things as well. Okay, so things like portraits or commercial work? Yeah, we've done quite a few portraits. Mostly at the moment comes from past brides and recommendations. And all, it's all word of mouth. Yeah. We've done about 25 portraits this year, and I've been photographing this year Harley Davidson's for a dealership that specialised in um, £40,000 plus custom bikes. Oh. Uh, funny you mention Harley because you are a big uh, Harley Davidson fan, aren't you? Yeah, I was their one of their customers, and we got talking about their project, and then they got myself and a colleague. We we did about ten shoots for them through the winter last year, up until about early late spring, and it was a lot of fun because one of the bikes won the world championships in America as well. Okay, quite yeah, good. especially when you have uh, your two passions of photography and bike together, you just can't get enough, can you? 
No, and it was very, very different from photographing brides. <laughs> oh, they, were, they, were a lot, they were a lot easier. They didn't answer back or have a strop or anything on the day, so it's quite good fun. Absolutely. Okay, so let's quickly move on to what kind of cameras and uh, system do you shoot with? Um, I've always shot Nikon. Um, I did include a Leica at one time as well. But we shoot purely Nikon digital cameras for the last five years, and my current bodies are D300s. Um, okay. Most important thing for us is the lenses, to be honest. All right. So, are you tempted to go full frame? Um, yes, but when the D700 replacement comes in, because it's over two years old now, and yeah. due to the financial things with the the yen, it's as dear as it was two years ago, so I'm waiting for the latest to come through in probably about three or four months after it comes out, when mm. any bugs are sorted. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting to see the kind of images uh, you shot with a D300, because um, I'm sure you are asked and uh, told the same thing, is to shoot winter weddings especially, you need the high-end $5,000 cameras and the best lenses around. But it's not the camera and the lens, it's the photographer who's behind it, isn't it? Yeah, well, precisely. I've got a film background with wedding for the first nine years, so I was basically stuck on 400 ISO film shooting at 320 ISO. So yeah. D300, 1600 is fantastic, and 3200 at a real push. But 1600 ISO for me with 1.4 and 2.8 lenses is quite liberating. Okay, and what kind of lenses? Are you using or shooting with? Uh, mostly wide and short lenses um, range from 10.5 fisheye up. The longest lens I've got is an 85 1.4, and my mainstay are 17 to 55 2.8 or 51.4. But that's the only four lenses I have at a wedding. So, do you shoot with just one body, or do you have a couple of bodies with different lenses? Um, two bodies. The, so you'll, you'll laugh. The backup is still a D200, which is Great camera for backup. Yeah, um, it's uh, usually with a pro fast prime on it, and yeah. it's only used for ten percent of the wedding, if that. Yeah, and you know the D two hundred is a fantastic little camera, and so is the D three hundred. You know, and I also keep you know saying the same thing again. It's not the camera or the lenses; is what you do with. Well, you know, I keep saying everybody to switch off your phones, and I haven't done it myself. So just give us. <laughs> Give me a minute, guys. I'll just switch this off. <laughs> I've done mine. <laughs> there you go. I've unplugged the phone now, so it'll be a bit of peace and quiet. Apologies for that. You're going back to what you say <laughs> a lot of it, seeing where the light is and how you expose. Um, yeah. 1.4 2.8 lenses up to 1600 hour sight. It's amazing what you can get in most circumstances. Yeah. And what's your favorite lens? 85 1.4. Same as mine, yeah, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous lens. It is, you can pretty much shoot a whole wedding or a portrait session with that lens. And of course, with um, DX chipped camera, 1.5 magnification, it's oh, a yeah. 27. You struggle, yeah. Quite a powerful weapon. You need to go a bit wide, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, when you don't have light and it's dark and horrible outside like it is this evening, do you use flash or on-camera flash or video lights? Um, I've got a, 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 a low-L video light, but I've hardly ever used it. The only external light I use is SB800 flash guns on a hot shoe, but I bounce it off all sorts of things to get angles and yeah. avoid shadows. Yeah, and I'm sure I'm we'll see some examples. Yeah. And we'll see some examples in the forthcoming slides in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Let's quickly touch on your workflow. Are you a photo Chopper, or are you a photographer? I'm a photographer. Yeah. Uh, I, I um, my Photoshop's ba basic on what I need to know, and that's about it. Yeah. So, what kind of software do you use? We're stuck on CS3. Yeah. Um, Photoshop CS3, we use Bridge as well. Uh, we've just going, gone Mac, so we've got the latest Aperture, which, when it quietens down, I'm going to play around with because I've seen some amazing results. But Bridge yeah. CS3 works well for us. Yeah. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And guys and girls, this is a very important message that Peter is putting across. It's not the camera, lens, or the software. 
Um, you don't need to spend tons and tons of money on the latest and the greatest. It's, if you've got something which is working for you and you do something right, it will work and you keep on doing it. Keep regards it to, yeah, sorry Fila, go on. Yeah, so my motto is keep, uh, or KISS, keep it simple, stupid, the motto that I was trained yeah. where I used to work, so. Absolutely, absolutely. And what about albums? Uh, magazines or traditional? Um, traditional Mackin albums, um, exclusively organ set albums from Australia. Yeah. They offer, they basically offer anything we need. So you don't get um, asked much about magazine albums? Occasionally, but um, in my experience, we obviously must lose the odd client. But um, we've had three or four in the last year that have come to us wanting, say, for example, a graphy studio. And when they see the organisms, they haven't asked again. They just love it. So. Cool. Okay. Um, I've got quite a few questions pinging in. Okay. Uh, I will come on to that in a minute to you at the appropriate time, Peter. But um, let's start with the first set of images, which is the bridal preparation. So how do you shoot a bride getting ready? Um, I try and keep it as, well this picture is quite a good example, as low profile as possible. Yeah. She knows I'm in the room, it was a very dark room, it was very wet outside, shot at a place called Le Mamoir in Oxfordshire, which I'm sure some people know. And yeah. I just decide where the best lights for different types of shots are, position myself and wait for the moment. And this was the bride and her baby daughter. Yeah. And the baby's face and also the spray from the hairdresser's spray is lit by the wind behind reflecting back into the baby's face off of the hairdresser's actually had quite a white blouse or top on. Yeah. It's slightly lifted in only slightly been brought out in Photoshop the baby's face. It is a gorgeous image, especially the expression on the little girl. No, no, that's what makes it, and it's subtle because you're looking for the picture. And the eye arm of the hairdresser takes you in. It's beautifully framed by mum and the arm and the eye. A little bit of luck. The eyes were just in the right place at the right moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you don't pause or set things up when the bride is getting ready. It's just mostly not sabotage. No, I'm, I'm not a photographer that says to the bride, "Can you go and stand by that window because it's better light." I, well, I've never had to. If I had to, obviously I would, but I've never had to. There's always something. Very rare. This particular room was up in an attic room and it was very, very dark. The only, the only window was there, I think, for memory as well, behind the baby. Okay, cool. Let's move on to the next image. It's one of my... Something like that. Yeah, it's a lovely image. What kind of ISO are you shooting indoors? Um, four, eight, or sixteen hundred ISO. The baby shot was sixteen hundred. Yeah. And you don't have any problems with going high on a D three hundred. No, uh, the biggest album picture we show is twelve by eight anyway, so it's not yeah. a problem. This picture that's no. just come up is one of, one of my favourites. It was shot on a D two hundred. Yeah. Um, it's about three years old now, but it's just the storytelling. Um, the framing, the windows, it's one of my favourite venues as well, but just everything about it, it's one of those, it came together, and I know she loves it, even though you can't see her face, she absolutely loves the picture. Yeah, it tells a beautiful story of her getting ready for the big day. And it, show, and it shows the dress as well, rather than just a mundane dress mm. shot, it, it all links. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Now this is quite an interesting shot of the bride arrival with the dad. Uh -huh. Can you hear me, Peter? Yep, yeah, it's just clicked yeah. over. That is um, actually a summer wedding this year, but um, although it's very bright behind where she is, yeah. it was particularly dark. It was a very oldy worldy church in the middle of nowhere, and you couldn't get away from the church to see it. Yeah, I mean, you meet it quite, you know, beautifully because the, even though the highlights in the background are blown away, the, the details in the dress 
are visible. Yeah, yeah that was because um, I manually meet her everywhere. I do use a hand meter, so I knew she was coming through that gateway. Yeah. So I'd already, on my recce, got a, a, a reading, which I knew was the exact reading. And all I've done in Photoshop is fractionally burnt in her eyes, only fractionally. The rest is as it was on the black and white conversion. Okay, it's yeah. just um, in that particular wedding, it was a family tradition. They went all the had three daughters, and they all got married at that church. And it was yeah. a quest and shot of something special coming through that gateway. Okay, and yeah, cool. Okay, we'll move on to the next shot, which is a very difficult wedding. <laughs> oh, sorry, a winter, winter stay. It's raining. That was November. Yeah. Awful day, November the first. That was um, two years ago. Yeah, and it was just the bride. It's in a place called Rye in East Sussex, and the bride originally wanted to walk to the town hall, which is on the hill through the town, from the hotel, and it was sideways rain, and she decided yeah. that she would get the car, but there's nowhere to park in Rye, so everyone else had to walk. Yeah. And it's just what it tells the story, shows the car. Yeah, and I just love the whole mood. So when you are shooting in the rain, do you have any rain guard on your camera? No. What I do, when I'm walking with the camera, I keep it pointed down. It's yeah. one of the times that I actually have a UV filter on the lens. And the okay. only reason for that is if it gets wet, I can take it off and carry on shooting. And yeah. on a wedding like this, when it's cold, I place my other camera in a small bag yeah. somewhere safe, but say it acclimatizes, so I can just... If it, the lens gets wet, I can just take the filter off and carry on within reason. There's, you know, there's only so much you can do, obviously. Yeah. But, and that was so dark. I know that's, um, from memory, about 2, 2.30. I was on 1,600 ISA at 2.8. Just to get so what shutter kind speed. of shutter speed are you aiming to handhold? I can handhold with care down to about an eighth of a second without worrying. But obviously the pro problem is just keeping the subject still enough. Yeah, but something like this? Probably about 125th, maybe 250th, I can't really remember, but it was quite dark. Yeah, uh, I'm getting quite a few questions for you, Peter, and sure. uh, uh, guys and girls, I'll try and um, well, ask Peter as many as I possibly can. Um, somebody's asking, John is asking, can you turn off the background music? Um, John, I haven't got any background music over here as no such. <laughs> um, Kevin Wilson is saying hello to you, and he has got a couple of questions. In fact, I might put it to you in a minute or two. Uh, Andy is saying the baby's face, uh, referring to that last image, the baby's face is absolutely amazing. Um, Alan Scott is asking, Peter, can you mention some of the settings used? And I prefer... Uh, and I presume you, he's asking about the apertures and um, yeah. gutters and the ISOs. Okay. Now with aperture, when it's very dark and you're shooting with a 1.4 lens, how wide would you open up? Um, if I've got no choice, 1.4. That yeah. lens there, the shot we're looking at with the umbrellas was the 17 to 55 and it was shot at 2.8. I'm quite happy to shoot there all day on that lens. Okay. Yeah. And uh, uh, Jürgen is asking, are you shooting in manual mode? Your yeah, manual exposure, and I carry a light meter, a conic light meter all the time, which I tend to use that and my, and my experience more than the camera meter. Okay. Ah, so that's interesting because you are one of the very few photographers who I know and I talk to that they, they still use the traditional light meter. You just can't go wrong with that, can you? No, I, I probably shoot 90% in manual, and this year probably 10% aperture priority. Probably because I'm lazy and I just want to make sure the exposure is right before it goes to post-production. So when would I you need... use aperture priority? When? When, when yeah. yeah when, um, if I've got no choice, if it's something happening and I've got... I'm trying to actually train my brain to take more advantage of that with compensation on the camera. And it's, yeah. when I get, yeah, it's not a problem, but it's just the way I've been trained is to use a light meter. And yeah. um, I tend to put the areas, and then I know in my head through experience how I'm going to change it. So I'm changing it without really metering it as things change, or it's side lit, back lit, or regardless of where the light's coming from. 
Yeah, I put okay. it in the center once room and that's it. Okay, cool. I'm just reading a couple of quick questions and uh, I've got a very interesting one for you, Peter, over here from Alan Scott. Um, he's asking, you know, he's noticing a lot of your images are in black and white. Is that for a reason or is it just common practice for winter weddings? Um, my style is probably two-thirds black and white regardless of the time of year. It's what I've, when I first started out, no one in this area was doing black and white. Yeah, I remember one photographer here in Eastbourne saying that he would never catch on going back to black and white, so we've always done black and white. Um, probably, yes, I probably since about 13, 14 years ago. And is it also it. because uh, on a black and white, the noise is a bit more forgiving if you do wish to go, you know, need to go over 2000 <laughs> ISO? Um, it could be, but when I shot film, I shot the same. And I was yeah. always on 400 film. Yeah. Okay. It's just it's, my, it's just my style and my passion. Yeah. So. Okay. Cool. Let's move on to the next image. Oh, oh I love this. here's a one in color. <laughs> yeah, I do do some. Have you won an award <laughs> for this image? Yeah, apparently it won. Thank you. It's Southeast Master Photographers Association. Um, the judge, I wasn't there. The judge even gave it the winning photographer of the year, and it won. Yeah the reportage category for better word. It's um, shot last December. Uh, the bride, Holly, was lovely, but she was uh, quite stressed at this time because the family-driven Rolls Royce had missed the church twice. So she was oh, running yeah. late. And yeah. it was very, as you can see from the picture, the window was very misted up. And she's peering yeah. out at bridesmaids and the vicar waiting for her. And I just, yeah. in the right place at the right time, which is half of it. Cropped off the top because above ahead towards the top of the car and the background beyond it. It's probably about yeah. two thirds of the frame. It's lovely. I must love that shot. I think no, all of my shots are twilight Lovely, lovely, uh, gorgeous shot. Now, when things are running late, especially arrival of the bride at the church or the ceremony, would you yeah. grab a few minutes for a few shots with the bride and a dad with the car or not? No, I never stop the bride with the, when she arrives. I just capture it as it happens. Okay. Never. I just uh, won't do that. Yeah, it, it is a matter it's sort of, of it, especially in the winter, but it winds the vicar up anyway. Yes. And to my mind, the bride's probably quite nervous, got lots to think about, and the last thing she wants is a middle-aged guy like me standing over camera telling her how to pose and smile at the camera. It just yeah, kills the dead. I just want to capture the yeah, real story. Yeah. So just go with the flow, and you've got plenty of time later on to get the pictures done, exactly. don't you? Yeah, cool. Okay. Oh, lovely. It's um, a Russian bride, the next picture. Um, yeah. shot at Shoreham. She was one of the rare brides that I have that wants to pose, but even this isn't posed. But I love the whole mood. I've got a bit lucky with the reflection. And I love the fact yeah. you can see the other girls in the background as well, just looking back. They're looking at the vicar. And yeah. I think from memory home outside as well. Yeah, it girls. is a lovely, lovely shot. The expressions of the on the faces of these girls are absolutely priceless. Yeah. And it's just because she's up for the picture. because she's up for the pictures, you've still got to be there to capture it in just a split second. You only get that one second, so you've just got to be hundred percent observant all the time. Yeah. Really now, Kevin Wilson is being a bit cheeky. Um, he's asking you, do you have a waitress on hand to pour some nice red wine? Yeah, well, my glass is nearly empty, Kevin. She said she's going to bring some more in. Oh, Peter. Aren't you waiting for the bottle of red from Kevin? Oh, yeah, well, no champers from Kevin, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, loads of pain for the winter weddings. Here's another one. Okay. Yeah. So talk us through this image, Peter. Is it? It's just not changed them. Is it the umbrella oh, shot? Yeah. Coming up? Yeah. 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 Just let it. Yeah. What this shot was it, again? It's actually a summer wedding, but it was more like winter. It poured the whole day. And I remember this story because the poor bride had coloured a gold dress and gold shoes and hadn't waterproofed her shoes, so they looked like muddy football boots when she finished. I just love. Again, it's sort of composition, framing, and the different expressions, particularly her dad, way sort of peering through. I was absolutely drilled. I was drilled. It was unbelievable. I didn't have an assistant or an umbrella on me at all. 
Yeah, it's just that moment I had that was shot on, and I think that's an old picture. So that was probably shot on a Nikon F6 with a 50 mm lens, because on the left, my F5, yeah. which is my color camera in the church. This is black and white film. Yeah. And again, I, and I know that was at the 60th at about F2, F2, A, and I remember it was very dark. I just thought, I hope they come up slowly because it's the whole walkway to the church is under the trees, I feel. Okay, yeah. Now, I've got a uh, question from Nikki Thomas. Um, what's your best tip for shooting a winter wedding? My best tip? Sorry. Can you say that again, please? What's, the, what's your best tip or advice <laughs> for shooting uh, winter wedding. What would you advise uh, someone? Knowing your equipment inside out and keeping things very simple, or sim simple and getting it in the bag first. Consistency is more important than competition shots or special shots. It's all about getting the results in trying situations like this shot here. So when you say knowing your equipment inside out, I mean everybody <coughs> does know how to use the camera. So yeah. What do you mean? Is that by controlling how much light or going through your lens and metering? Is that knowing, you... knowing the, the exposure, the metering, not having to think of the camera, which obviously comes with experience, but without, if you haven't got to worry about the camera, you can concentrate on getting the basics right. And I always think about, I've seen lots of pictures of people taking up winter weddings and they're not the same quality or consistency as their summer weddings or spring weddings. But you're yeah. still going to produce results, and it's about consistency through the wedding, just keeping it simple. I know, I know Nikki, I've seen one of her weddings she shot recently when it was pouring hard, and through the whole wedding she maintained that, and that's what the bride wants. Anything else is a bonus. Yeah. But she's not going to thank you for getting the, the award when you shot, but the rest of the wedding is dreadful just because she was inside, for example. That's right. Yeah. Cool. Simplicity and consistency. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to. The next image. Back up. This is um. Which is yeah. There you go. This is going to be the same wedding I think from the umbrella shot earlier outside Rye Town Hall. Mm -hmm. And again, particularly dark. That has, from memory, it's two years ago. I'm sure it's got a touch of flash on it, but it was shot at 1600 ISA, and it'd be a 60 at 2.8 on 1755. The flash. It's probably bounced off the wall behind me at an angle upwards because the wall was. You got different pictures. So you, so you won't you won't fire the flash directly you onto picture. your subject. Oh, you have got a different picture come up for me. <laughs> what picture uh, have you got in front of you? You should have the bride arriving with her dad with somebody holding an umbrella behind you. Right. Okay. Oh, it's come up now. Yeah. yeah. yeah this oh. is um shot in. I've got it now, yeah, it's a very windy day in Cornwall, on a hilltop above, um, it's on the cliff top opposite Plymouth, oh, I've forgotten, yeah. Tor Point, and it was quite hot, exceedingly bleak, and the winds were 50, 60 miles an hour, they had trees blown down on the way back to Plymouth, I was coming back, and it's again all about the moment, she, she was lucky, she was quite a good sport, but it was an absolutely awful day for her, and she lived up in Nottingham, and... Yeah. Again, this is actually a summer wedding. I know I've taken you on pictures, probably. But she left Nottingham, and it was a gorgeous day, and she came down for the beach and the cliff top, and we spent part from the church the whole time just inside the reception. She couldn't get out. Again, yeah. it's all about exposure's fixed, I'm in position, and you're just waiting for the expression. And it's a lovely storytelling moment of a quite an awful day. Sorry, Peter. I was just reading a couple of questions on... Sure. And there are quite a few pinging in. I've got a good question from Jürgen. Are you shooting in single mode or continuous mode? Um, continuous slow. And I probably, in a shot like this one, probably took two to three frames and that is it. Okay. The reason for that is it's one moment, three, maybe three frames, just ensuring that I've got the chance of not having a blink, having a good expression. Because um, when I shot Leica, of course, I could see, with no mirror, I could see as I pressed the shutter, if there was a blip, but with a SLR camera, there's a fraction of a blackout, so I just want to make sure. Okay. So on average, how many images will you shoot?
Hello, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Uzair Karawala and I'm a full-time pro photographer. My expertise is photographing on location, events such as weddings, portraits and corporate photography. I'm extremely proud and privileged to be an evangelist for Nikon UK. I have been presenting seminars and workshops for Nikon for the last five years. I'm also a regular speaker for some of the biggest companies like Calumet at Apple's flagship store in Regent Street, London, Ireland's biggest photography show, PhotoFest, at the SWPP convention in London, and Focus on Imaging at the NEC Birmingham, to name a few. My work has been published in major photography magazines in the UK and abroad. In your free report, I'll give you the links to many PDFs which have been published in major magazines all for free. This free report is all about lifestyle portrait photography and earning a great income. Making a living from something you love, that is photography, is got to be the best thing in the world. Run a successful and thriving business from home without the need of expensive premises and staff. Be able to take images like this on location in any given environment or conditions. Without the need for carrying heavy studio gear on location, which takes ages to set up and pack, with wires and power packs everywhere, not to mention the safety aspect. I'll show you my lightweight and portable lighting system. Whether I'm at a sunny beach or in freezing conditions at the Arctic Circle, I'm able to work extremely fast and get the shots I need. Without any need for expensive equipment. In this report, you will not only learn how to take great images, but also learn what equipment you need to run your business. I'll share with you some very simple off-camera flash techniques to take stunning images like this one. You'll also learn how to produce images like this very, very quickly and easily. This report is not only about cameras, flashes and software. I also talk about websites and why blogs are so important for you and your business. How to drive visitors to your site and get indexed in search engine result pages. Most business owners don't know what the difference is between short tail and long tail keywords. I'll explain this to you in simple English. Show you how to create incredible offers your clients can't resist. Why networking and PR is critical for your business and how to get tons of free publicity. Learn how to write an effective press release for the media and get published for free. Did you know YouTube is now the second largest search engine in the world? Are you utilizing this superb media to get more traffic to your website? If not, I'll show you how. You can be enjoying this report for free within the next few seconds. Instantly downloadable and best of all, it's completely free. Just enter your name and email in the box on the right hand side. I really appreciate your time and wish you all the best. My name is Ozair Karawala and I hope to speak to you soon.